Today we will be talking about hematopoiesis and role of bone marrow in that. The process of hematopoiesis means that the process by which the blood cells are made, right? Hematopoiesis means that the process by which we make RBCs, WBCs and platelets. That how we make red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets. Let's start with the very beginning that from embryonic and fetal life. The first of all, the cells which make, okay, this is yolk sac, right? And in the fetal life or rather embryonic life, very early life, the cells which are responsible to make the, to do the function of hematopoiesis, they first of all appear in the, yes, in the yolk sac, right? In the yolk sac around third week of gestation, third week of embryonic life. In the yolk sac, certain stem cells appear and these stem cells, when they multiply, they lead to the formation of RBCs, WBCs and platelet. But we should define what is stem cell. Stem cell is any cell that when it multiplies during multiplication, for example, if this is a stem cell, stem cell has a unique property that whenever it multiplies, right, it multiplies asymmetrically, that some of its cells will differentiate along the mature, well differentiated products. These are the well differentiated products. And when it first time multiply, it asymmetrically multiply, one group will go towards differentiation, other group will be responsible to maintain its own population, right? That when a, whenever a stem cell multiplies, right? Some of its products will go and differentiate into mature cells. But some of its products, product cell, they will maintain its own population. That is why we say stem cells are those cells which maintain their own population or which have a property of self-renewal, which have a property of self-renewal. For concept purpose, let me tell you that this is bone marrow stem cell, right? Let's suppose along the differentiation line, here is a cell which is called erythroblast. Is that right? Suppose it is erythro blast. Now, if you put erythroblast into a petri dish, into culture, cell culture material, all erythroblast are properly stimulated and provided with proper nutrients and stimular stimulations, then all erythroblast will eventually convert into RBCs and no erythroblast will be left at the end in the petri dish. Right? So it means erythroblasts have a capacity to multiply and eventually they convert into mature RBCs, but they cannot maintain their own population. But in another petri dish, in a cell culture, culture dish, if you put a stem cell, right? Stem cell, will, if you are properly stimulating the stem cells and you are giving growth, you can say calumny stimulating factors, right? Stem cell will not only provide the mature product at the end, but it will always maintain its own population, right? So again, let me repeat, what is stem cell? Stem cell is any cell which is capable of asymmetrically dividing, one group will go towards production of well differentiated product and other group is responsible to maintain the original population of stem cells. Is that right? Now let's go back. The hematopoietic stem cell first of all appear in the yolk sac, right? And around the third week. And from here, these cells may migrate and of course, these cells will migrate to other part of, you can say embryo, and they will, especially as time will pass by, these cells are going to migrate to liver, these stem cells, hematopoietic stem cells, and to the spleen and to the bone marrow. But another point which I want to highlight that these stem cells also take origin in aorta, mesoderm of aorta. They also take origin in mesoderm of gonads and they also take origin in mesoderm of mesonephrons. Mesonephrons, right? So what we have learned that stem cells 
responsible for hematopoiesis that is formation of RBCs, WBCs and platelets first of all appear in the yolk sac but they also appear in mesoderm of aorta, mesoderm of gonads and mesoderm related with the mesonephron, right. These stem cells eventually transfer to the liver of the fetus, right, around third month. These stem cells from aorta, from gonads and from mesonephron and of course from the yolk sac, these stem cells around third month, right. It's too easy to remember that in the yolk sac this is three weeks and they appear into liver in three months. Is that right? Yolk sac three weeks, liver three months, right? So then liver get populated with these stem cells and now liver will become the major organ for hematopoiesis. It means in the fetus around the third month of fetal life, right? RBCs, WBCs and platelets are mainly produced by the liver and some of the stem cells may even go to the spleen and some even may go to the lymph nodes. So what we really see that even though dominant hematopoiesis is going on in the liver but some hematopoiesis is also going in spleen and lymph nodes as well, right? Now this process continues right in these organs up to the very early just before the birth right uh, this uh, liver will uh, stop producing hematopoietic activity right so actually why it will stop because somewhere around fourth month of fetal life right this is suppose your bone vertebral column and sacrum Right from here, especially from the liver and lymph node and from the spleen, these stem cells will start migrating around four months of fetal life to bone marrow. Bone marrow, right? This is fourth month. So we can say on fourth month, right, these cells will appear, four months of fetal life, these hematopoietic stem cells will appear in bone marrow and hematopoiesis will start also in the bone marrow, right? And by the time baby takes birth, right, in a full term baby, right, uh, the almost all hematopoiesis is going on in the baby's bone marrow and just before the birth, liver has stopped its hematopoietic function and this of course, by the time of birth, there is no significant hematopoiesis in the liver, there is no hematopoiesis in lymph node, there is no hematopoiesis in spleen, all the hematopoiesis is going on in newborn's bone marrow, right? Again, let's recap. In case of, yes, first of all, what is hematopoiesis? Hematopoiesis is the process of making blood cells like RBCs, WBCs and platelets from the hematopoietic stem cells, right? Hematopoietic stem cells first of all appear in yolk sac during intragestational life around third week and as well as hematopoietic stem cells also appear in aorta, a mesoderm of aorta, gonads and mesonephron. These stem cells shift to the liver around third month, right? And from third month, right, liver start hematopoiesis mainly a little bit hematopoiesis also starts in spleen and lymph nodes. Liver continues hematopoiesis up to the near the time of birth, right? But around the fourth month of fetal life, hematopoietic stem cells shift to migrate to the bone marrow. Bone marrow becomes their permanent resident for the future, right? And in the bone marrow, these stem cells populate well, they proliferate well, and from there they release their uh, mature product like RBCs, WBCs and platelets into circulation. Is it clear to everyone? Now, at the time of birth in a full term baby, right, almost all hematopoiesis must be limited to bone marrow and all the bone marrow in the newborn is active. And you know active bone marrow is called red bone marrow. Inactive bone marrow is called yellow bone marrow. 
what is the difference in red bone marrow and yellow bone marrow red bone marrow is active bone marrow right and yellow bone marrow is yes yellow bone marrow is inactive bone marrow why it is yellow the reason being when bone marrow become inactive right then in such bone marrow which is inactive it is populated with lot of fat cells right and hematopoietic cells are very less due to that reason uh, this bone marrow looks yellow colored right opposite to that active bone marrow the bone marrow which is actively involved in hematopoietic process right uh, that bone marrow is highly vascular that bone marrow has lot of uh, uh, hematopoietic cells and that is why uh, I mean all the stem cells and there are progenitor cells and there are uh, many cells which are passing through different developmental stages of formation of RBCs, WBCs and platelets. So uh, they make the bone marrow red. When newborn baby is born, all the bone marrow is red. Then what happens? As age increases, right, red bone marrow, red bone marrow, uh, you can say, remains active only in the membranous bones let me tell you first of all that by the time of birth by the time of birth right full term baby full term infant right all bone marrow is all bone marrow is red this is point number one secondly in a full term newborn baby in a full term newborn baby if you find that there is extra medullary hematopoiesis right this should be considered abnormal now what is the concept of extra medullary hematopoiesis extra medullary hematopoiesis mean hematopoiesis going on outside the bone marrow for example if there's a full term newborn baby infant and hematopoiesis is going on in liver and spleen in big amount, it means this is an abnormality. Is that right? But in premature babies, the babies which take birth before time, the premature infant, they may have some significant uh, hematopoietic activity in their liver. Now, after this, right, yolk sac 3B, hematopoiesis start in the liver around three months of intrafetal life. Hematopoiesis starts in the what is this bone marrow around fourth month and uh, liver and bone marrow both of them keep on doing hematopoiesis right until just before the birth right liver stops hematopoiesis and then hematopoietic function is left only on the bone marrow and all the bone marrow is red in newborn then what happens that even though newborn has about up to puberty up to puberty right almost all bone marrow is almost all bone marrow is red is that right it means it is hematopoietically active is that right but after that what really happens that hematopoiesis stops in the long bone and peripheral bones and around the age of 18 and 20 hematopoiesis is limited to central central or axial skeleton axial skeleton plus right plus hematopoiesis is axial skeleton means lot of membranous bone membranous bones right and plus the ends of proximal ends of rather proximal ends of yes Humerus, humerus and femur, right? So this area is having the red bone marrow. Now let me tell you what is axial skeleton. Axial skeleton mean or membranous bones means that uh, hematopoiesis is going on in the central bones. For example, in an adult after the age of 20, hematopoiesis is limited to skull bones limited to the vertebral column limited to the sacrum and also present in the ribs is the right and hip bones and hematopoiesis is present in an adult only in the proximal ends of the long bones like humeri and femori 
Is that right? So remain the bone marrow which is present in remaining bones that is now yellow bone marrow, right? Bone marrow in remaining bone marrow in remaining bones is yellow bone marrow. Yellow bone marrow means inactive bone marrow. Now the point we, uh, which you need to remember is that in a person who is uh, more than 20 years or adult, right, there's 50% bone marrow is inactive and yellow and 50% bone marrow is, yes, active and red. Is that right? 